sometimes I like to share something before I sing, and I just want to um, say that it is good to be here today. It's encouraging to be with other believers, and um, with all the burdens and stuff we've had through the week. This song um, expresses how the Lord ministers to us and um, who he is to us. Savior, precious Redeemer and friend, who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of men? Oh, you rescue the souls of men. Comfort or keeper, spirit we long to embrace. You offer hope when our hearts have hopelessly lost the way. Oh, we've hopelessly lost the way. Thank you so very much. That was beautiful. Today, I want to make you think. I want to stretch 
your mind. I want to make you um, think about your God, this God that you serve, this God that we pray to, this God that we read about in the Bible. And the title of my message is Promises from God. And I want to, I want to make you think because sometimes I think we get a, a misconception or we get this misidea and we're not really for sure about what we believe and because we call Him our Heavenly Father and we call Him our Heavenly Father, sometimes we try to manipulate God or we use this word manipulation with our children. For an example, there are two different types of promises in, in the Bible, conditional and unconditional. But then I even think, what is God trying to teach us when He talks about promises? The Bible, this, this book that we read is filled with hundreds and hundreds of promises. But sometimes there's a word in there, if. And I ask you this question, I'm making you think. Let's test your theology this morning. You and I raise our children and our grandchildren and we'll say this. If you are good, or you can ride from here to there without saying a word, and don't fight with your brother or sister, if you will do this, then you will re be rewarded with this. Are we guilty of that? We do those types of things all the time. And the question I have for you, when God says, if you will abide in me, is He throwing that same manipulation to us and saying, hey, you know, I expect this from you and that. I'm making you think this morning. Because we read in the Scriptures in John, you know, Jesus is in the upper room. He says, if you will abide in me. And all throughout the Bible, we can find different things. If you obey this, if you follow this command. You know, we play on that word. And I'm here to submit to you today that God loves you right where you're at. And I want you to know that God's got promises that He wants to feel, fulfill in your life, in every area of your life, regardless of what you're facing. Is there a question mark dealing with that if? Sure. But does God let it rain on the just and the unjust alike? So I just want to make you think. You know, what do you believe about your God? Do you have this relationship with God that if you only walk a certain way and talk a certain way and act a certain way like your daddy loves you, that's the way God's going to love you? Would that be a poor theology? You know, we as adults, we are always trying to manipulate our children. And some of it is for their own good because you're fed up and you've had a bad day and you don't want to get a hold of them. So you're already saying, hey, listen, just be good. I'll let you watch your cartoon. We'll go get pizza if you'll do this and do that. And we try to. And I, and I understand why we do it. But is that the kind of God we really serve? But then on the other hand, does God want something from us? Is He expecting us to live a certain way and act a certain way and to obey Him and to follow Him totally in obedience and surrender lock, stock, and barrel? I just want to make you think today. One of the promises that God gave was with Noah and the flood. What did He say? He said, I'm putting this rainbow in the sky to remind me that I will never destroy the earth again by water. Now that's a promise. That's an unconditional promise from God. I want to share a couple others with you. If you take your Bibles and open them to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. The Bible says, all Scripture. Now that word all, all, A-L-L, -A -L, is that in the Hebrew and the Greek, what do you think it means? All. Oh, so we don't have to get into deep, great deep theology here and, and trying to bring out all the different languages. A-L-L -L means what it says. All. Correct? It says all Scripture. So this is right here. We have canonized our Bibles. Now there are a lot of extra biblical writings that are out there. And I suggest you sinking your teeth into them sometime for history and to learn some things that are out there and what's happening. And we can find dates and you get these extra biblical writings and, and you can learn some things that were happening during this era and during this time. But all the theologians, God has allowed this book 
Now you understand it's written by 40 different authors over a 1,500 year period and covered literally hundreds and hundreds of different geographical areas of this world and all of it dovetails together and we have canonized it and we have made it God's holy word by God's leading, right? So we can say that this book that you have from Genesis to Revelation is the scripture from God. Amen? We're with that. So it says, all scripture is inspired by who? By God. So then, God says, I'm giving you this. Now, it's a love letter. Now, please hear me. You know, what God has planned for us, you can go back to the first couple of chapters of Genesis and the last couple of chapters of Revelation, and you can find that God has instilled for us or has or His design for us is to be in the garden and in heaven. This thing called earth is because of our doings, and one of these days, we're going to step over into this new heaven and new earth and experience what God has really had in store for us. And we're all looking forward. We know we have a loved one who's already experienced that, and we're going to celebrate his homecoming tonight and tomorrow. Him going home. We call it death, but it's a celebration of what our Bible says. And that is a promise. Miss Craig, do you believe what the Scripture says, that your husband is in the presence of God? Yes, she's shaking her head. That's our hope. That's what it gets us through. So we know these promises. So God's not trying to manipulate us, but there on the other side is for Mr. Craig to go to heaven. The Bible says you've got to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, repent of your sins, and re receive what he did on the cross for you. So there are some stipulations, but it's not so God can manipulate us. He says, listen, I want your, I got your best in mind, but I want you to choose voluntarily. So you've got to understand, you know, when he uses this word if and all these things are taking place. He says here, all scripture is inspired by God and profitable. So it's for our benefit. For teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. Look at verse 17. That the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. So, he, so God says, listen, I'm making a promise to you. Whatever you're dealing with in your life, whether it's your family, whether it's husband and wife, whether it's being a man, being a woman, uh, children, you know, uh, finances, you know, what you need to do and how you need to live, every area of your life, everything that you're, you can muster up in, the, in, the, in the, your mind and all the, what God has given you in your intelligence, everything that He has, you know, that He has allowed us to create and everything, whatever you want to come up with, He is saying that in this book, I've got you, what we, I got the answers for you. Amen? He says, I want to teach you everything that you need to know about every circumstance in your life is here. And what he has done is he has allowed, you know, the writers through the leading of the Holy Spirit to compile all this history about all different areas of, of men and, and countries and nations and kings and, you know, the poor people, everything. He has put all this in here so that you and I can reach in there and dig and search through and, you know, and, and find, you know, answers to our situations. That is a promise from God. Don't, aren't you glad that you have a book like this? It's the only book that I know that's alive, you know, and it's the only book that I know that when you read it and study it, the author is right there beside you. See, it's powerful. And see, guys, listen to me. God's got promises, and He's not trying to manipulate you saying, hey, He says, listen, you know, He says, listen, if you are going to be married, learn how to treat your spouse the way that I want you to treat them, and you do what, according to what I teach you, and you know what? 99% of the time, you're going to have a great marriage. Now, I know that some men are hard-headed, and the women said, amen, Right? And I understand that. But he says, listen, it's not that, you know, I'm trying to say, if you do this, you know, I'll do this. He says, listen, I'm trying to show you that I have got the answers for whatever you're facing, whatever you're dealing with. And if you allow me to allow the Holy Spirit to work in and through you and use my scriptures, whatever you're facing, I will give you the answers and give you the promises that you need so that you can sustain all the issues that you're dealing with. There's a lot to say, isn't it? But see, but it's the truth. See, he says, listen, I want you to know, he says, I've got promises for you, and these promises are here. But to sort of make these promises work and get the total fulfillment out of them, there is some responsibilities or there's some commitment that I need you to make. 
But he's not trying to manipulate us. Is that hard to say? It's hard to wrap your mind around. But then, he, then again, he says, you know, you've got to be a Christian. You've got to do these things. So that word if is a great big word, even though it's only two little letters. It's a great big word pertaining to our faith. But God still has promises for us. I want to show you another one. Turn over uh, to 2 Peter, a little bit to your right, if you're using your Bible and you're not trusting the screen. Just turn over to your right a couple, two or three books, to 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4. The Bible says, For by these, he, talking about God, has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises in order that by them you might become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. So what is he saying there to us? He says, listen, I have given you all these promises. Satan is trying to pull you down in everywhere, in every area. He uses this thing called flesh, uh, called flesh to, to, you know, to, to draw us in. You know, the lust of the flesh, the things of the world. You know, we all want what everybody else has got, da 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 And once we get it, then we realize we did, really didn't want it, right? You know, we think that we want all these things, but then when it works out, we say, hey, you know, that's not really important. What's really important is having our relationship with our families, you know. We make our, you know, we, we have this mindset that if we have this or marry that person or live here or have that job or have this amount of money, then we'll be happy. Listen, you know, that's, that's a lie straight from, from, from hell itself. You know, it's a mindset. You and I have to believe and understand that God, does He want us to achieve? And yeah, sure. You know, and have the things. Yeah, they, God's not messed up about that. The richest people in the, in the world you'll find in the Bible. Solomon, Abraham, David. You know, these, these, these were rich people. Richer than what we have today. So it's not, it's not about that. God says, listen, you know, I want you to understand that, you know, what's really important and what you're dealing with, I have got answers for you. I've got promises to help you sustain and get through all the areas of your life. Isn't that exciting? Look, listen to what he says here again. He says, he says, he said, He has granted to us His precious and magnificent promises in order by them you might become partakers of the divine nature. And then He uses that word, having escaped the corruption. So He's saying, listen, these promises that I've given you that is found in the Scripture, all Scripture is inspired by God, He says, I'm giving this to you to help you, to guide you, to instruct you, to teach you, and to show you so that all the areas of the life that you have to face and encounter he says, I got you back. He said, I got you. I, he says, I do this. He says, if you go back and read the first part of Genesis, this is what he had in store for us. You know, not all these were mosquitoes biting and wasps sting, okay? That's not what God's about. God's about, you know, where the lion and the lamb lay down together and we can experience those things. But because of the fall of man, see, that, that, okay, that just, just came to my mind. What did he say to Adam and Eve? He said, eat of every tree, but, right? If you do this, this is what you will receive. If you do that, this is what you're going to receive. But was God trying to manipulate us into being a certain way? No, He said, I'm telling you the truth. Listen, if you get out here and you get in caught up in all this, this is what you're going to deal with. These are the issues you're going to face. These are the circumstances. If you get out here and drive, you know, 110 miles an hour, what's eventually going to happen? You're going to wreck. You know, that's not, that's not, that, that, that's, that's an absolute. Now, unless you're on a racetrack and you're driving, you know, a NASCAR or something like that and you're doing something of that nature where it's designed for that. But if you go up here and run up and down this highway driving like an idiot, guess what? You're going to hit a ditch, a tree, a culvert or something. That's just the law of nature. You agree? So God is saying, listen, put this in perspective. I have given you my scriptures. I've given you my love letter so that all the areas that you face, I have got promises for you that will help you sustain and get through every area that you're hurting. Isn't that powerful? Wow. So what do you think about your God? Who is He to you? How do you look at Him? Do you look at Him as a grandfather type? Somebody you going to crawl up on His lap? Or do you look at him as a Santa Claus type that, you know, if you're a good little boy, you know, he's going to give you everything that you want? 
See, I mean, really, what and how do you perceive this God who has spoke everything into existence? He is holy, righteous, pure, and true. He is the covenant cutter. He, he, keeps, all, you know, he keeps everything in order. What do you think about Him in your personal, intimate relationship? There are so many people that I know that beat themselves up for the mistakes they've made and, and, you know, things that have come across, you know, I wish I'd done this, I shouldn't have done that, and, and I got caught up with this group, and I'm acting this way, and then they just beat themselves up, and they just carry this guilt over and over and over. Well, the promise, one of the promises in the Bible says, if you will confess your sins and come clean before me and repent of them, I will clean you up and make you like fresh virgin snow. I'm paraphrasing there. Why, how do we miss it? Listen, guys, listen. We got a God who loves you, but we got a God who's firm and just. He says, listen, come and become one of my children through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, but that does not give you the right way to go out and live any way that you want. If you still become a Christian and go out and live the way that you want to live, guess what? Trouble is still going to follow you, and trouble is still going to follow you whether you are walking on water and, and, you know, and living totally and completely. Listen, trouble follows. We're in a fallen world. You cannot get around it. But... What do you believe about your God? How intimate are you with Him? What is your relationship with Him? What do you think about these issues, that these promises? Listen, I know people, listen. I know people who they will follow a pastor or a ministry and they will try to, and this person's ministry will explode, or this person will get rich, or this person will have all kinds of favor of God, and people will line up and start doing what they're doing. I'm going to be silly here for a second, okay? There are people who, uh, I'm just making this up, right? Okay? There are people who, uh, they're, they're in the spiritual realm, and they're out there and they're doing this, Okay? And God's favors fall upon them. So there's other people say, man, look what they're doing. So I'm going to start doing the same thing. You know, and nothing happens. Right? You know what I'm talking about? I mean, there's, there's people who try to, you know, they're trying to mimic someone else. Or I'm going to have this ministry. And I wanna, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do that. And, you know, and they, God bless them. So, you know, here's a program that worked for this group. So we're going to do this program and everything's going to work out. But I'm asking you, what about you and your relationship with God? How do you study the Scriptures? Are they inspired? Are the promises of God for you? Does God try to manipulate you to have you be this way? that way or is God trying to tell you listen if you will act this way this is what will happen these are the benefits you will receive from it I'm not trying to tell you to do these things because I want to manipulate you I want to try to tell you these things because they're better for you does that make sense and so we, we, we get it all confused well let me give you another one all right I'm just I'm just trying to make you think here all right I just, I just want to make you think another one is found in Matthew Matthew chapter 11. And this is, a, this is a very powerful promise, but it also has an if, but the if is not there. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and 29. You hear what it says? Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, where's the if in there? If you come, right? So we can put the if in all of them, but he, here's a promise. He says, listen, look what he says. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Listen, guys, is that what we need? Isn't that what we need? We need peace. When we see our world in total disarray, we see what's going on with Israel and Iran and Russia and the United States and the economics between the Democrats and the Republicans and the independents, you can just see this mess just brewing over and over and over in every country, every newscast. It doesn't matter where you turn on, what city, what state, there are rapes and murders and violence and break-ins. You know, just every, every state, every TV station. And we see all this going on, right? But God says through His Scriptures, which are inspired, if you will come unto Jesus, right, who are weary and heavy laden, that's all of us, right? What's He say? He says, I will give you rest. 
Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Now, guys, is that a promise that we need to, that we need to, to really let our minds and our, everything that we have sink into? We need to meditate upon that. What's he saying? Our whole world is in disarray, but if we will come unto Jesus and trust in Him and walk in faith, even though everything else is going to hell in a handbasket, if you will, he's, he's got it under control and we can find rest in Him. Amen? And how is that exemplified? I watched it through Miss Craig this past week. I've seen it with the sisters. The Carr family. They were, I'm dealing with talking about death. That is the, the greatest doorway we have to walk through. It says, hey, those of you are heavy. You can't understand things. You're trying to do what's right. And it just doesn't seem to work out. Family right here in the front. Chris and Mary. You've had three weeks of tough times too, haven't you? Yeah. We all have. And we say, oh Lord... We get down on our knees and we put our offering in the plate and we, we get down on our knees and we pray and, and you know we, we read the Scriptures and we walk on faith and, and in faith and all these things and it just seems like we're bombarded with all the issues of life and, and we're almost to the point where we just can't hold on any longer. And Jesus says, hey, you're a candidate for my rest if you come unto me. I know the world is not the way that I want it to be. But human beings chose that they were smarter than me. And now people are trying to manipulate the Scriptures. They're trying to get something from me. But I'm here to tell you that if you will just love me and follow me in obedience and you will just let me do what I'm supposed to do because I am God, listen, I will get you through all these trials and tribulations. I'll get you through all these testings. I'll get you through all these heartaches. I'll get you through every tear that you've ever shed. I'll get you through every pain you've ever felt. I'll get you through all this. And then when it's all said and done at the end of the day, you can lay your head on your pillow and rest at night because... You're with me. Is that, is that powerful? You see, we miss it, guys. We miss it. Why? Because we're intellectual. We're emotional. And we think that we know that we can, you know, if we do this or that or whatever like we do with our children, you know, if you're good today, I promise you, pizza and ice cream. If you don't give Granny any trouble, now don't do that to Paul Paul. Now, come on now. You help mom and dad out here now. You, you go in there and you clean your room. I ain't saying all those things are bad because, you know, we got to do what we got to do. I understand. But we sometimes we roll it over into the spiritual side and we think that, you know, because we have done this and we've done all these things. Haven't you been around families that try to do everything they possibly could and they just had turmoil just after turmoil after turmoil? Why did God? You know, because they can go through it. I can't explain it. But we can't try to manipulate God into trying to make Him something that we want Him to be or something that we think He should be. Listen, He's God. He says, listen, I've given you this love letter to help you and to show you and to guide you. And He says, listen, yeah, there, there are some stipulations. And I'm not trying to put stipulations on you like you would your child. But listen, there's going to, there's going to have to be a commitment from you. There's going to have to be a thing called faith. There's going to have to be a thing in trust. And you know, you're going to have to lay it down on the altar and leave it there. That's what God wants from us. I want to ask you again, what do you think about your God? Who is He to you? It's a very valid question. Is He the God that your granny taught you about? Is He the God that you just hear about, that you read about on the billboards? Or you get out of the fortune cookie at Chinese restaurant? You know, who is, your, who is your God to you? So many times we try to ride in on the coattails of someone else. And I gotta, you know, listen, I, personally, each and every, I'm asking each and every one of you, 
Who is this God to you? What does this book mean? Well, how do the scriptures apply to your life? How do you do? Don't it say in the Bible, test the spirits and see what's of what? Listen, who is he? Because, I mean, it's a, it's a very, very vital question. In the Bible, there, there are many different scriptures that tells us that it tells us things that we don't understand about God. How could God take his own people and allow the Assyrians and the Babylonians in different eras to take and capture them and to wipe them out? How could God open up the land and swallow his people, his own people? Why would he allow a bunch of heathens, heretics, those who worship Satan and not him, he used them to do things? Listen, guys, there's a lot of reasons. I mean, there, there's a lot of verses I can't explain. Why did he even allow Satan to do what he did? I'm telling you, I've studied. I don't know why. But I do know this, what he told Job. He said, Job, where was you at when I hung the stars? Where was you at when I did all these things? You know, hey, <laughs> you know, who do you think you are to question me? And you know what? He never answered Job. Who is he to you? So you need to settle that. When you say, preacher, how do I get close to him? How, how, where do I start? First, you've got to realize you're a sinner. Anybody in here says they're not a sinner? The Bible says you're a liar. So we're all sinners. So we, are, we need to admit to that we're a sinner. Now we need to admit that we've sinned against God, we've sinned against ourselves, and we've sinned against mankind. And by us doing good works and trying to manipulate God, we can work our way into heaven. We've got to say, okay, God, no, I can't do that. We've got to come to a place and say, God, it's not on me, it's on you, and I trust you. That's where you start. I put my faith in trust. You all came in and sat in those pews today. You knew they were going to hold you, didn't you? Right? If you got something that's a little shaky, what do you do sometimes? You sort of feel, so, hey, do I need to... Does this be a good thing to stand on? <laughs> I just had to say that. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> it's okay. She does something she's told all her children not to do, to stand in a swivel stool. And then she fell and busted her head. And we're still working with it, right? So I, did, I was not going there, but I, I'm sorry. <laughs> but seriously, okay, if there was something that you were not, that you were unsure of, what would you do? you sort of shake it. You know, say, hey, could I sit in this? Or are you going to get on a ladder? You know, you check it out and say, hey, is this ladder good? Because you're going to climb to the top of it. You understand what I'm talking about, right? We all do that. Well, in faith, we got to come to a place where we just come and we sit in it. We climb it. We do what we got to do. We say, God, I'm, I'm by faith. Even though I don't understand it, I can't grasp it. I don't understand what the shed blood of Jesus Christ means for my sins. But you know what? I accept it by faith. I know you're God in the flesh. And I know what you've done is for my benefit. And I accept it. I repent of my sins. I turn from it. I ask Jesus Christ to come and live in my heart. Allow the Holy Spirit to take total, complete control of me. That's where you start. When you start there, then you're on the right path. Then slowly... You start learning. You get in Sunday school class or you get an uh, accountable partner, somebody that's going to hold you accountable and you start sharing and, and you start getting in, you know, in the scriptures and you start getting study guides and you start growing. You get involved in the church and all those things. And then what happens is it helps you to learn, right? You know what it's about? It helps you learn. Amen? So I'm going to ask you one more time. We're done. I told Brother Pat today, I said, Brother Pat, you, you need to hang in here today because we're going to be done by 1130 because I just got one simple question for the people. Who is this God to you? Listen, you need to nail that down. You, when you leave out of here, you need to, when you lay on your head on your pillow tonight, 
And there's nobody in there but you or the darkness. Well, I don't care if you share a room with somebody, your husband, your wife, whatever. When you, before you close your eyes tonight, you need to come to the conclusion, who is this God to you? Because how you answer that will determine how you receive the promises He's got for you. Everybody runs game. Y'all understand that? Everybody's a politician. And I'm using it in a negative sense. It's who we are. We all call in favors. Hey, can you got the answers to the test? Can you help me? Hey, I need to get my car fixed. Hey, man, this is Gary. Come, you know, when I go to Kentucky, you know what I do? I call the guy. I say, man, look, I'm on here for a day or so. Man, can you get my car in? He said, man, you anybody drive all the way from Arkansas to get their car worked on here? He said, man, I got you. I use it. We all do. We all play games. We're a game player. It's just who we are. You, you, we can't get around it. Are you trying to play games with God? Settle it. Who is this God to you? Will you bow your heads, please? Every head's bowed and every eye's closed, and you're just meditating there. Who is He to you? Who is this God to you? With every head bowed and every eye closed, we're going to open up our altar. Here lately we've been using our altar a whole lot more. And now we need to, we use it at the beginning of the service. We need to use it at the end of the service. This is between you and God. Is there anything that you need to pray? Anything you need to confess? You know, to Him, not to me. I didn't die on the cross for you. This next few minutes is between you and Him and, and, and you and Him alone. Somebody you need to pray for. Whatever the case may be. I'll be standing down here. You just come right on down. Just kneel down here to this altar do whatever you need to do if you want me to pray with you i'll take your hand maybe you need to move your membership i do not know what's going on in your life but these next few moments is between you and god oh heavenly father have your way and we'll give you all the praise and all the glory in jesus name i pray amen and amen